Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a quick gouache session. So I have my colors here. I want to be using, pro um, mostly using the primary red here. I don't know if it focuses. Yeah, primary red. I'm going to use my pen's gray as my main blue. And I'm going to use primary yellow, which is kind of a lemon yellow. So, and of course, I'm going to be using white. So I'm just going to put this on my palette. It is just there. And we're going to do a quick study. I have a reference picture and it's actually something I want to gift a friend with. And I just want to train before I do the final piece for them. So um, I've taped the edge of this here to have a, a square format. I thought it would be nice to have a square format for this one. And I'm going to start with a large size 12 brush, a flat brush. And yeah, let's go. And also today I'm trying to film with my new camera, which is supposed to be a better quality image. So I'd ho I hope it will improve the experience a bit. Um, yeah, I forgot to put my white down. Okay, here we go. And maybe I will use a little bit of primary blue at some point because there is a very bright blue sky actually. So I'm gonna see how I tackle this. I'm gonna start by mixing a very muted green just to put the shape of the heel. So basically it's it's a, it's a mossy heel with lots of flowers and white flowers and stuff. So I'm going to start with a very thinned out layer of gouache and I'm using watercolor paper here, it's just like cellulose watercolor paper but it works very well for gouache so I think that won't be an issue. So here we have this and then the background is kind of complicated because there are so many heels going on everywhere so I think I'm going to simplify it a little bit so I'm going to use a darker green that leans more towards the blue. Same, I'm gonna thin it out with water and I'm just gonna put the outlines of my background here. Something like that I guess. This one, so what is very in the, very in the background, I'm going to use more of a purplish color. I guess I had a lot of green on my brush, but at some point it will be more purplish. To really push this one back. Yeah, something like this, I guess. And then we have this heel and this heel here. And it's there's supposed to be kind of a of a stream down here, so I'm gonna leave some room also to put my some water down after. Um, what I'm gonna do next is there are a lot of rocks actually that were delim delimitating the path, so I'm gonna use my primary red with a lot of white to have a very light um, pink color and I'm going to use that to delimitate this place here. So I'm not trying to do anything very realistic for now, I'm just putting down the colors and delimiti delimitating some kind of, of shapes. Okay, and we have also some here, and we have, I'm going to add a tiny bit of paint gray to have more of a kind of lilac color, and add some more rocks here and there. So 
So the purpose today is not to have a fully rendered piece by the end, it's just to have the elements in place and to play a little bit with the colors to see how I can achieve what I want to do with these colors. Uh, now I'm going to take some paint, a tiny bit of paint gray and a lot of white and see if I can use this for the string going on here. So I'm still using my very large brush and I'm going to put also some of this color in the sky. So it makes kind of a moody dark sky but I mean it was during a trip in Scotland so I guess it kind of works to have a moody dark sky. And actually I said that the sky was bright blue but part of the sky was bright blue, the other part was very stormy and by the end of the hike it started to rain quite heavily so mm, okay something like that I'm gonna add some dark shades here for this cloud rainy clouds that were coming in a direction and maybe a tiny bit of purplish tones also here but I'm keeping it very diluted, so it's more watercolor -y like than really washy here. Okay, it gives a mood to the scene. Uh, now I'm gonna work also on my shadows. So I'm just gonna switch to a slightly smaller, so this is a size 8 brush, it's also a flat one and I'm gonna switch to this one so it's easier to see what I'm doing actually um, and I'm gonna use a purple again, I love using purple so I'm gonna be using lots of purples to delimitate the shadows a bit more, so I'm gonna use And I think it will also help delimitate the different heels from one another to have kind of the shadows showing them showing how the landscape is composed, at least I hope so. And it will help make more sense of these big clouds in the sky too. There are actually lots of shadows. It was very, um, it was a moody day with lots of shadows and light, so it's interesting. Like I said, I'm putting this one more in the background by adding a layer of blue here. And I want to lighten a little bit my water stream here. So I'm gonna And I think it should disappear quicker, so maybe I'm gonna go over with some of this green here and just kind of blend it. So it looks very messy for now, but I've already tried this landscape before and I think it's already a little bit, be a little bit better than last time, so it's still, <laughs> it's already something. Now I'm going to use a brighter, a brighter green to add some of this kind of mossy texture here. So I really like how the dry brush effect worked on the, with my first layer. I like that we see a lot of the paper showing through. So I'm going to keep that and just add some different types of textures on top. But I think I'm going to keep it very loose and expressive because I really like how this first foreground is looking right now. 
I'm just also going to add some highlights to the, to the stones because they are way brighter. And highlights and shadows to these small stones. And maybe add a, a tiny bit of yellow to my magenta here and to have something a little bit more sandy color. And I always try to use a variety of colors when I'm doing stones so that it looks a bit more natural because when you look at, at, at pebbles or stones, they, they usually have lots of colors. And I think the pink was a little too pink. So going for more of an orangey tone will make them um, will help them blend more into the, the landscape. Even if I'm keeping the purple for kind of the the, the shadows of these stones. Um, however, I'm gonna use the pink for something for the um, the white flowers because there are kind of a lot of white flowers everywhere so I'm just gonna put a little bit of pink texture here and there just like so just dabbing the top of my the tip of my brush and I'm gonna do the same with a more purplish version that will give them some more that give, would give the effect that there are some shadows also adding some more highlights to the to the stones and I'm gonna add also some texture to the shores here and some lights to the places that are not in the shadow of the hill down there. Um, so the stream is definitely not looking the way I wish it would be looking. So I'm gonna be reworking on it a bit and also I'm gonna work on this sky too, adding some, some white to define more the shape of the of the cloud and I will also be adding some darker purple some darker blue purple and using more of a dry brush because this one is kind of in the foreground so I want it this this cloud I mean so I want it to be to have more textures than the very watery background that I did before This dark color is beautiful. I was having a, a hard time finding the structure of my clouds. I think I'm going to use this dark color also for some of the shadows because it's a beautiful color and it will really make things pop compared to the color. Now I'm going to use a round a round fine brush, a number two round brush, it's a watercolor brush and I'm gonna be using this orangey color again to work again on this part of the trail and these stones here I think they're a bit boring for now, the stones. But like I said, it's just the first sketch to get to know the subject and I will probably paint it, paint it over and over again before I do the final 
the final piece so regarding the colors I really like the combination of these colors I think it, it gives a very moody piece but it's way greener than what I see in my reference in my reference there is way more um, earthy reddish earthy tones which I didn't show on this on this piece here so I don't know if I if I will try on my next attempt to lean more towards those because I think the combination of colors worked pretty well here and the, the very dark purple with the very bright green works super nice so I'm gonna see for that I have also to work on the clouds to make them more realistic in a way because they look really crazy right now I'm gonna put a little bit more white on these clouds because usually when you have really dark clouds like this you also have kind of the a white outline of these clouds and the, the funny thing with, with um, gouache is that it, it always picks the color that is underneath so my very white part is becoming very lilac -y. <laughs> which is cool too not exactly what I was going for but still nice and I'm trying to add I don't know what texture to give to those clouds because first I tried to do a very dry brush texture but I think that also sweeping things work pretty well so I don't know but I very much enjoy the colors that are here and one last thing I want to do is the idea is that a friend of mine to whom I want to gift this was actually climbing this mountain so I'm gonna try to do a tiny little person going up the mountain I don't want it to be recognizable that it's him, I just want it to be recognizable that there is someone. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just a quick wild sketch and I'm just going to add uh, some color notes underneath. Of which colors I've used and which mixes I've used. So those are for my greens. So yeah, that's it for today's video. It was a really quick one just to show you how I approach these very wild sketches to get to know a subject and to get to know a little bit the colors. So I really like this sandy color for the stones. I think I will stick with that. I like using the paints gray as my blue because it gives a very moody atmosphere. I didn't like the pinkish brush effects that I put it here. So I think I'm going to quit those, maybe just do a little bit of dry brush to give some color changes, but I'm not, not going to try to reproduce the texture of those. Maybe st still put some of the wild grass here because that looked nice and some worked more work more on the stones because they could really look great, I think. And on the background, I like the shape of the mountains, so I think I'm going to keep this simplified version because on the real one, there are like three mounds and then there are a lot of um, in the background you can see all of the mountains also and I just quit those ones but I'm, I'm gonna keep this composition I think and just work on how I'm gonna render the stream if I do a stream um, I think that the shape of it is pretty nice it's just I have to find a light blue color I think to do it that will reflect a bit the sky so I have to work on this and to really make it fade in the distance or maybe make it a lake instead of a stream, I'll see. And the last part, I like the watercolor water mm, texture of the sky, but I want to work on how to render better the cloud. I like the colors that are in, but I don't like the structure that it has. So those are kind of my, what I take with me when I finish this. So I'm gonna tape this off, if I can. 
Now I'm just, what I'm doing now is I'm saving all of my tape here so that I can always use them and come back to them whenever I'm doing a sketch, even if I don't have my scotch with me, my tape with me all the time. And because I've reused it so much, it's it's less intense than it was. It, it doesn't have as, as much um, tape power. And so it doesn't rip... Ugh, okay, I spoke too, too quick. It doesn't rip as much my paper as it used to do. Still does it a bit though. So yeah, this is the final one. I'm just gonna zoom in. And I hope you've enjoyed also the better quality of the video. I hope it really makes a difference. Please let me know in the comments if you really, if you saw a difference or not. And I'm gonna try to do most of my videos this way now, if it did. And as always, if you like see me do this kind of sketches and see me try different type of art forms, feel free to subscribe and push the thumbs up button, the like button, because it really helps the channel and it helps me also understand better what you want to see and do some content that you may like. Um, and yeah, until then, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!